So it's recently come to my attention that Marvel's Avengers, a game which most of us haven't thought about since the moment it released, it's not actually as unalive as many of us thought. You see, they're still releasing major DLC packs for this game. They're updating the store almost weekly, and they have daily, weekly, monthly challenges still going even to this day. But you know what? Maybe I was just naive and negative. Maybe this game isn't actually as bad, or at least right now, as many of us thought. Maybe they fixed it, and maybe it's worth playing after all of this time. And you know what I'm gonna say next? Well, I decided to try it for myself. So today we're launching into Marvel's Avengers on PlayStation 5 with all of the latest updates, patches, everything available to players except for paid DLC because I'm not gonna give them any money until I actually am convinced that the game is worth paying money for at this point, at least more than I paid back in the day when this launched. So buckle up, it's going to be a fun one. But before we start, I want to say a quick thank you to our sponsor, without whom this video could not happen, NordVPN. We all know the internet is an amazing place, but it's not all glitz and glamour. I, for one, use a VPN everywhere I go, no matter what I'm doing, not just to protect my business operations with YouTube and streaming and all of that, but also just to protect my personal finances, my personal items like family pictures and things that I don't want getting out. It's just a responsible thing to do. And my pick for VPN is NordVPN. NordVPN provides cutting edge technology to protect you not just when you're browsing the web, but also to open up a world of possibilities. Whether you're just casually watching videos on Netflix, but you wanna be able to gain access to British TV shows even though you're in Florida, or if you're at a coffee shop writing a script for a YouTube video and you want your personal information protected against outside threats. Regardless of whatever you may be doing, NordVPN offers a simple all-in-one solution for your data protection needs. And furthermore, they just introduced a new threat protection feature, which integrates all of the data protection services you would normally need an antivirus software for into their one app. Meaning you don't have to have 15 apps running at once to be protected anymore. All you need is NordVPN. Check them out today at nordvpn.com forward slash Luke Stevens. And when you sign up for a two year plan, you'll get four months for free and they will also knock 65% off of the price. Again, nordvpn.com forward slash Luke Stevens, save 65% and get four months for free just for signing up. Again, I don't recommend these products like this unless I actually believe in them. I use NordVPN on all of my devices, my streaming PC, my gaming PC, my phones, my tablets, everything. And I cannot suggest strongly enough that you give them a shot. You will be very satisfied. Okay, welcome back. Let's get into it. First things first, we have to plug in our headphones because I forgot to do that before we, uh, we started, so. This is, this is how it's done. I take the plug and I insert. So from the moment you boot up the game, you'll be confronted with a bunch of information about changes, Prime Gaming, Black Friday door buster deals, all sorts of crazy stuff. If I just dismiss it, free market, okay, cool. I get, they want me to go to the marketplace immediately. Okay, let's go there and Okay, well, not a great start. <laughs> like, okay, I get it. You gotta make your money somehow. And if they're still releasing updates and patches to this game all this time after launch, especially after it received such terrible reviews and negative reception from uh, influencers like me, what a terrible name for a job. You know, it only makes sense. They've gotta make money somehow. So what do they have here? Well, they've got Avengers Endgame themed content they've got ooh exotic spider-man marvel studios avengers infinity war that rolls off the tongue all of this stuff listed for credits how much are credits okay so it's basically a one one hundredth scale system like a lot of games have where a thousand credits cost you ten bucks ten thousand cost you a hundred bucks blah 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 that gives us some info where we can break these down. So like this outfit is seven dollars this outfit seven dollars this one is $14 for one skin. I mean, I can preview it and like I can appreciate it looks good. It doesn't look bad, but 14 bucks for that. I mean, I could go get half of a Starbucks coffee for that. You see, we also have the hero roster. If I go over here, we've got more heroes than we had at launch. Back at launch, we basically had like Thor, Captain America, Black Widow, Hulk, Iron Man, Miss Marvel. We had all those, but all of these others, Hawkeye, the Mighty Thor, Black Panther, Spider-Man, 
Kate Bishop. All of these are new additions that were not present when the game first launched. And you can see the full roster here on this uh, main menu page. So I figure now it's uh, only appropriate that we actually jump into the game and see what it actually plays like. Boom. Okay, we're in the game. I mean, honestly, I'll give them credit. PS5 load times. I'm about it. And graphically, like, it's actually a pretty good looking game. Just looking at the metal on this suit. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, can I still sprint like a, a dummy? Look how... Okay, if this works, it's going to be fine. This is how Iron Man sprints in this game. You push down the left stick and he, like, floats like a butterfly. Ah, oh, yeah, he does it. <laughs> it looks so stupid. I'm sorry. I don't know. Okay, some people won't think that looks stupid. But I just... I've always thought that that was really dumb. Like... He could just jog and it would be faster than that. And surely that wastes power, right? Or like his, his piece there, that's, you gotta maintain charge somehow. Okay, so it's giving us access to the ship where we can just explore around. Oh, oh. Yeah, give it a tug, give it a tug. Can't do it. One of these days. One of these days, sure can't. Sure can. Eh, it's a good touch. We get to explore their quarters and see that. Eh, you know what? I like it. We can look out the window, see the ship, see all the extra planes out there, all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's it, honestly, it's pretty cool as far as like multiplayer hubs go. It's not not terrible. But okay, like how do we actually play the game? Like what, what do we do? Uh, pressing this. Objectives. Okay, objectives. Uh, taking aim, all sorts of different operations. War for Wakanda. Okay, complete the way it began mission. Okay, how do I complete that mission? Okay, boom. Resistance never provides access to faction assignments and daily missions. Okay, so we go here and then I can... I can view all different faction missions. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's accept all assignments. Okay. Okay. And then I go here. And how do I play? Okay. Assignments. I, oh, this is confusing. Like, to be perfectly clear and honest, this, of course, is not probably most players exposure the point of this video is for us to go back and try this game after not touching it for a very long time and that being said i think that this is the experience most players are going to have because they're going to go back into it and just be like what the hell am i supposed to do i like i'm running around i'm trying to play the game and i'm just thoroughly confused okay maybe i just do i press something like a tablet here no do I run up here? Dog. Who's smarter than their human? Okay. You are. Okay. Oh my god, I'm missing something so obvious. I just know it. Okay, I went back to the main menu because I cannot for the life of me figure out where to start missions. I know, lol, cringe, he can't figure it out. I've been running around like 10 minutes now and I still can't figure it out. So I'm going to go here. I can select... Avengers Initiative, one to four players. I can go through the campaign again. I can do taking aim and basically launch directly from here. I don't know if this is where I was supposed to start initially. I I, I honestly don't know. I have no idea. Um, let's do War for Wakanda. And it should just launch me straight into this one. And this is brand new content that was not available at launch. This is something totally different. I've never seen this. I have no idea what to expect. Humor an old sorcerer for a moment, my king. Your father gave me that much respect, as did your father's father. Mm, you're old. Long ago, a meteor plunged into the land of Wakanda. Wakanda was not an advanced nation then. It was a group of warring tribes. The meteor brought them together because it contained the metal we now call... Vibranium. Ah. Vibranium made Wakanda. With it, we advanced. We repelled outside forces. We connected with our past and our Panther God. You challenged your uncle to become the Black Panther, but you were born to be king. Not all can do both. Not all receive past blessing when they do. Mm. You made a difficult choice, closing Wakanda's borders when you thought your friend had died. Spoilers. I do not begrudge you it, but this new threat 
is different. You have no idea how far these people will go to take what they desire. A corruption has followed in the wake of Ulysses' claw. Okay. Made of the vibranium that keeps the heart of Wakanda beating. Okay. And that corruption is spreading. Gotta beat the corruption. The okay. Now stands in its way. You. Okay, so it's basically Horizon Zero Dawn. That, that's what we're doing. So immediately looks pretty good. Again, this is running on the PS5. This is not like a PC version. Big boom boom. We clear. Clear. Okay. Let me seek the next charge. Oh, a merc. You gotta have mercs. It's not a game unless you got mercs. Okay, wait, I don't know why they keep putting the camera close to the ground. The game looks good as long as you're not close to stuff. Keep it off the ground. Is it Despacito 2? J. Biebs finally dropped it on that guy. Oh. oh. It looks like it's made out of plastic. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Okay, so that didn't look great, but the rest of it looks okay. There's the big man himself. So just to walk you through my initial impressions here, haptic feedback on the DualSense is like actually kind of solid. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. In terms of movement animations, it looks fine. Nothing too special. The jump feels pretty good. We got a classic double jump. You got to love it. We button mash with square to attack. Uh, triangle is sort of like a lunging attack. Holding it doesn't really do anything other than combos. And then a quick swift uppercut. Yeah, that, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. Left trigger, we can use a ranged ability. There is adaptive trigger support, so there is resistance. And then going with right trigger allows us to charge our ability and get it going. Okay. It's coming back to me. Now, one of my frustrations with this game when it launched, and it was one of the reasons a lot of people didn't love the way it was put together, is because the levels are very narrow. I mean, you see how, like, this is one side of it, that's the other side of the level. Like, very narrow, they don't feel very expansive. There are a couple missions you can go on where they give you some wider open areas, but all told, this is... A very tightly organized mission structure from case to case. And, I mean, you can see it here. There's a base that we're expected to run to. We beat people up using our abilities. And then we move on to the next place. We beat those people up. And then we repeat the cycle. You know, the, the mission structure is much closer to, say, Vermintide or the new Warhammer 40k Darktide than it is to a classical superhero game like you might see with, say, Miles Morales or... Marvel Spider-Man for PS4. And I think one of the reasons that that's kind of frustrating for players is because things have changed. Love it or hate it, like open worlds are the mainstay now. People kind of expect it. And especially when it comes to superheroes, and this is something that I think needs to be pressed very clearly. Superheroes are super. And as a result, they can do things that regular people just can't do, such as traversing vast expanses quickly and easily, making exploration and adventure all the more intriguing and immersive. Unfortunately, though, in this game, everything is so tightly packed together that there is no adventure, there is no exploration, and it feels like you're a superhero running on very tight tracks. But you know what, let's get over here. Let's do some combat and see what this actually has to offer. Because this is a whole new character. This is not somebody that I've ever played with before. So I don't know what he has to offer. Let, let's see, let's see. Okay, so he's been running that whole time. <laughs> Just running in circles. <laughs> Okay, some can fly. Okay. 
Overcharged enemies. Certain enemies can become overcharged. When this happens, they're more resistant to damage. Able to... Okay. Overcharged Sonic Gear, Sonic Infused Attacks. How many times must okay. I teach them this lesson? It's the Black Panther! I do believe you're right. Good. I mean... It doesn't feel like the worst thing ever. Okay. Oh, I summoned the plastic panther. Okay, one other tidbit. The dodge is super laggy. So, like, if I try to dodge this, like, that's the extent of it. <laughs> it's, like, very weird. Doesn't feel right. Okoye, I have cleared the camp. Okay, go. Let's run. So this is a spot we need to get somewhere far away quickly. Okay. Can we go like all crazy no, on him? No, we can't. Okay. You will regret this. You're outnumbered. Give him everything you got. You should have brought more. So I mean, all told, it feels fine, but it's a very like 2009 way of structuring your superhero game. I can't like oh, I yeah. think there is Go fun to be had, to but it's just not too. what I look for in a modern game, especially a modern game that I'm already kind of eh on, you know? Like if you're trying to win me back over, I don't know if this will do it. Some people though, I'm sure, are in chat right now typing up comments saying, Oh my god, this looks amazing and I just want to play this. I I'm sure that that's the case. I personally am not like that into Marvel stuff. I'm not that into superhero stuff to begin with. So I don't give like a lot of bonus points just for being superhero oriented. And so like for me, it, it could be Black Panther. It could be some dude named Doug. Like it, to me, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Okay, so it says destroy the corrupted vibranium clusters, but there's no like clusters here. Uh, how do no, they're under the ground? How do I get to them? Like for real. I'm I'm thoroughly confused. Nope, that doesn't do it. Okay, I just Googled this, guys, and I found a Reddit thread posted by uh user the Dionysian Dionysian, maybe one underscore one. He posted it a year ago when this first launched in 2021 of this exact thing. And uh apparently there are supposed to be clusters here for you to destroy but they haven't spawned in and as a result you can't progress see how i'm running into an invisible wall that's supposed to be the cluster but you can't destroy the cluster if the cluster hasn't spawned yet and as a result here you're at a soft lock the only way to progress apparently is to restart the checkpoint and let's see if they spawn in now once we run to the same spot if this is the case and they haven't patched this after a year and like the top search for this DLC. Yeah, look, there's the spike. That's what it's supposed to look like. Wow. Okay, so there's a bug in this that's been present since launch that I, I guess they just don't feel the need to deal with. So, okay. Okay. I mean, this was one of the problems people had with the original game is people felt like it wasn't being uh, given proper treatment and people felt like it, it was kind of an uh, afterthought from the developers. And it, this kind of reaffirms that very idea that a year after launch, something as simple as this is still here. And okay, then I run over here. I beat the crap out of this one because of gaming. This is what we do. And boom goes the dynamite. Okay, that one's done. Then we run over here. We can activate this terminal. Wow. Okay, I mean, this just like, it drives me crazy. Like, I want this game to blow me away and I want to play it and be like, oh, wow, this is way better. We discovered something, you guys. Go back and play this game. Get it on sale because nobody else is playing it. But then stuff like this happens where it's like, okay, you guys couldn't even be arsed to go and patch like uh, one of the biggest DLC for your game that you've ever released and you couldn't manage to do that? Like, come off it. And this is like such a common issue that it's at the top of the Play Avengers Reddit 
and it's just never been addressed. It's crazy to me. And let me be clear, the reason why this is a big deal, I think, in, in my humble opinion, is because for a game like Avengers, people have had fairly negative experiences with it thus far. People tried this game at launch, if they did, and they either didn't enjoy it enough or they were turned off by the negative reviews. Their friends didn't want to play because of the reviews. And so it just kind of flopped. It just died. People weren't that interested. It was designed as a live service game and nobody really wanted that. And so it just kind of fell flat. And now going back and trying this game again for the first time in ages, like I'm doing right here, players are already very, very cynical. I wouldn't even say skeptical because skeptical is like not being convinced of something until there's adequate evidence or sufficient ed evidence to point in one direction or another. Whereas cynicism is like going into it with a currently negative point of view. Like you're going in cynical and just negative and you're looking down on it. You, you kind of don't want to have a good time, right? That's the general attitude. And that's how I think a lot of people would go back to a game like Avengers for the first time. They'd go back cynical and like, you know what? This is probably gonna suck. Buckle up, here we go. And let me be clear, I totally, totally understand that. I don't think you're wrong for doing that. Uh, in some ways, I think I'm, I'm fighting that urge right now. But when you play through the game again to give it a fair shot, and then you run into a bug like this that's been present since launch in this big expansion they had, and they haven't bothered to fix it after all this time. And I just ran around for like 10 minutes. I, it was probably cut out because that wasn't interesting. Thank you, editor Jacob, for doing that. But I ran around for like 10 minutes trying to figure out why I couldn't break these things. I was like, is there some ability where I hold down right trigger and then ground smash while jumping from a ledge that I just missed? And maybe I wasn't paying attention to the tutorials or something. I wasted my time doing that simply because there was this soft lock in the game that apparently is so common that it's a point of common discussion on the subreddit for this game. It's just wild to me that they would blow their opportunity to win back players by just being lazy like this. And I, I like, I get it. I get it. Is this a super high priority fix? Probably not. Like the game is running, the animations are working, combat's working fine you can just reload checkpoint to continue progressing. It's not that big of a deal, but when players are starting from a very negative perspective, you can't afford to do that because a lot of people, as it is tempting for me to do right now, they will reach this point and just walk away. Cause they're like, okay, if you're not even gonna put in that level of effort to fix this up and win me over, why should I put in the effort to continue playing through this thing? and hope that it's awesome. But okay, you know what? Let's try this one just to give it a shot. Hawkeye, Big Hulk, fun with a, a beard. What else could we possibly want? Let's see what this is like. This is another expansion they did. They're gonna give a quick story recap. Probably similar to the one we just got with, no different. Okay, I'll be quiet. I believe some of you know Kate Bishop, formerly Hawkeye. Those, oh, those frame right. drops are in the game. That's not the capture card. I'm seeing that too. So you're working for Shield now? It's uh complicated. Where's Clint? That's complicated too. Okay. Agent Barton was captured by AIM a few years back. There's been very little intel since. No, Clint. Clint and I were looking into what happened to Director Fury after A Day. That that's uh the that's the voice that? actress that plays uh Aloy. Our guest finally agreed to help. Remember Sounds just like her. She didn't change her voice at all. Easy duck. Deal's a deal. I'll do my part. Clint? Kate, you need to destroy that place. Now! Do you know what that thing was? Well, basically, it's a bridge through time. I've done research on the concept before, but until now, nobody's been foolish enough to actually try it. Okay, and that's the source of these tachyon disruptions? Nothing that quite like wearing dark sunglasses indoors. It just makes you look smart, you know? Like, I, I respect you if I see that. <laughs> We're gonna go get Clint out of the wrong timeline, cut Monica off from her future self. That would stop the storms, right? That's still messing with time. That's that, that might work. Oh. Spoopy. The Iron Giant. In the future, we dude, I loved that movie as a kid so much. 
What was his yeah, name? Hogarth? Hogarth! Hog, hog! Hogarth News! I mean, so I'll, the one thing I will give them credit for, okay? It seems as though they really have uh, built out a story that spans multiple seasons, multiple expansions. And if you're really, really into superhero stuff and Marvel stuff, honestly, you'll probably really enjoy parts of this. I mean, just the fact that, that there's so much content here, I think is pretty impressive. Sure, there's a ton of like heavy monetization buried in here. You can just look at how aggressive all of this stuff is. Even like uncommon consumables are listed here. These consumables, which are I would assume more rare. Oh, like XP upgrades and stuff like that. Okay. And I can I can claim it and then I'm sure they'll let me buy it in the future. Okay. I don't know. Whenever a game gives you access to paying for like increased XP, that's hold on. That is like a major, major red flag. Because if a studio is like, hey, our game is so bloated and probably boring for a lot of people that we're just going to give you the option to give us more money not to play it. Like that, that should be very concerning. <laughs> I mean, we tease the crap out of Ubisoft for doing that with Assassin's Creed where they're like, no, our game is great. That's why you can pay us to play less of it. It's like, it doesn't make any sense at all. And that's the exact stuff they're doing here with these XP boosts. It's just stupid to me. And you know, in a lot of ways, I think it actually betrays the fact that they actually know that this is kind of effed up what they're doing. They know that this game is too bloated. They know that the grind is too heavy for like actual credits and cosmetics and stuff. And so they build this thing in for XP boosts that you can pay for if you don't want to pay outright for the skin or whatever else you're grinding for. Like they know, they know, they might pretend not to know in like press interviews, but they, they know, they know what they're doing. But okay, let's go talk to Clint. Let's see what he's got to say. Ooh, character selector. Okay. I can swap looking for Spider-Man. I don't want Spider-Man. No, I do not. Uh, I want to play as, as Hulk. No, not Bruce Banner, Hulk. Okay, I get it. I'm on the ship. I can't do that. Uh, let's play as Thor. There we go. Look at that her. Look at the her. Oh, it flutters in the wind. Oh, weird. He's in here like glitching out. Is this part of the game? Is that supposed to be happening? You see that? Maybe, maybe, is that a bug or a feature? I don't, I don't actually know. Hold on. I guess we'll see in the cutscene maybe. Yeah, it's it. It's in the game. Okay. I don't understand. Apparently that's part of what happened when he got, when he like passed out on the table. It makes you chromatically aberrate. <laughs> so same thing I said before in the Wakanda expansion, like you see this huge expanse, you see the skyscrapers falling over. You're a superhero. You would want to just run off in the distance and explore all of that, but you can't. You can like run over here and like jump over here. There's a couple little buildings over here we can look at. Okay. There's not a whole lot. And what is here isn't that compelling. Like, look, I would bet you good money when we go into this skyscraper, there will be a chest on the floor for us to open and pretty much nothing else at all. We run over here. There's nothing in here. Okay. Up there. Okay. I do like the grapple hook. I'll give him credit for that. I can break that. There's a, a crate to open for stuff. And then no, nothing else. Oh, some crates we can break. More crates though. It's just more more of that. And that's uh, that's the whole building. <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing. You know, maybe this is why I was like kind of tricked into trying this again because I looked at this and I thought you know what it looks actually like maybe they've made some imp improvements like they've got new characters new set pieces they've got new combat systems all sorts of cool stuff maybe this is actually like way better than it was at launch but what I'm seeing now is that they're just really good at building these small set pieces that look good in a trailer and look good in screenshots but once you actually get your hands on it you realize there's not much here. It's it's the old saying, you know, it's as like wide as an ocean, but deep as a puddle. That's kind of how this feels where there's so much potential and you look off here and you're like, wow, if I could just play a game 
as Hawkeye, exploring this, old Hawkeye, I guess, I'd be in. I'd be down. But this is just like so bleh. And by the way, you see the thing in the top left, the distance, like hot and cold meter. That's so 2009, it's hilarious to me, but whatever. We're just gonna roll with it. Doesn't it also feel like the sound design is like missing certain effects? Like watch as I break these. It feels like when you collect the little orbs inside, there should be a sound effect, but there isn't. Like watch this, I shoot it. And then they just like go inside me and that's it. It feels like it's missing something. I don't know, maybe I'm just being overly cynical at this point. Again, like I was saying, this is crucial, like crucial moments because you're bringing new players back into the fold who are skeptical and cynical and you need to win them over and like having them do hot and cold chases straight out of 2009, I, I don't think it's the way to win back players who are already kind of over it. Oh, and look at this. Now the signal is leading us away from the interesting thing that's the city that I want to explore <laughs> and it's leading us away into like a bland, generic wasteland. Great. Like, they know I want to go there. Why am I going here? Maybe we go there later in the DLC. Maybe that's what they're building up to. But it just kind of reaffirms this idea that every time you think something cool is going to happen, they don't, like, subvert your expectations and do something even better. They take you into, like, something even more generic and bland and do that. And I, I just don't believe that it has to be that way. I truly do think that you can have amazing set pieces, really cool stuff like primed that you show off early on to get players excited and you can pull that off, do it great and then add more stuff later on that's just as cool and awesome. I don't think you have to have one cool thing in your expansion or one cool thing in your game that you like foreshadow early on and then bring players back to. That's just dumb. And again, it just kind of reaffirms the idea that I've been trying to put forward this whole video, which is that they have to win us over right now. Like these expansions should be put together to try and like win us over. Those of us who stopped playing the game because it was reviewed poorly, because it just wasn't very fun at launch, because it was like a microtransaction filled mess. But instead they're doing stuff that is so bland and lackluster that it's just not really interesting. And it's really sucky. Cause I was hoping, honestly, when I sat down to film this video this afternoon, I was hoping that I would be blown away, that I'd be like, oh my God, this is so great. This is like something I had never expected. I didn't see this coming. This is a great game. We're gonna play it over on stream on Luke Stevens Live on YouTube. Check it out, by the way, links below the like button. And I was hoping I could like make a big critique of it and videos galore and it would be great. And I could be like, oh, the comeback of Avengers and it would be amazing. Unfortunately, I just am not feeling that. And who knows, maybe it gets really awesome like right after this or really awesome right after where we paused with the Wakanda expansion. But the point more broadly is just like, it's their job to win me over and captivate me. They're not entitled to my time, especially after releasing kind of a crappy lackluster game up front. And so if they don't capture me in the first 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes, I, I don't think that I and being unfair by putting the controller down. But who knows, maybe I am missing something. If you want me to continue playing this, come over, join me on stream live at Luke Stevens Live on YouTube. Again, linked in the link tree in the description box below. And if you wanna see me play more of this, I'm happy to give it another shot if you feel like that's necessary, but it's after 5 p.m. and I have to go upstairs, make dinner, hang out with my wife and little, little fella. Mr. Lachlan. And uh, so I'm going to go do that and have a great time while doing it. Hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your day too. Thank you for watching. I love you very, very much. Thank you for making this dream a reality. I love you very much. I'll see you in the next video or the next stream, whatever happens first. I'll look forward to seeing you over there. Also follow me on TikTok. That's a new thing I'm doing. We're posting all the time. So do that. Luke Stevens on TikTok. Much love. See you. Bye.